Hi there, and welcome to Saibi, where we explore the fascinating world of honeybees. Today, I will show you the craziest thing I've ever witnessed while beekeeping. I will show you how a honeybee swarm left this tree behind me all the way to the other end of this property behind this huge knit house behind me. I managed to capture this on video and I will walk through it every step of the way. So please stay tuned for a really exciting video. Thank you. So I was taking my coffee break under this beautiful tree and all of a sudden I hear this buzz above me. I look up and there's tens of thousands of bees. Just moments before I started recording, all these bees were clustered on a single branch of this tree. Just in a matter of seconds, all these bees are in the air, flying in this chaotic way that we see here. And then I realized that these bees might actually be moving towards their new nest. I said to myself, this would be a great opportunity to record this and talk to you about the swarming behavior of honeybees. You see, when we look at bees, we see the social system that reminds us of communism because each single bee works for the benefit of the hive. When we look at honeybees, we look at the hive as a super organism. The bees will collect food for the hive, they will uh, protect the hive, they will uh, sacrifice themselves for the hive. They all work only for the benefit of the hive. But when it comes to decision making and swarming behavior, we might be witnessing one of the most democratic decisions in animals other than humans. So at this point, the bees cross the net house and they're getting closer to their new nesting place. We will see it soon. As for the decision making and swarming behavior, we know that honeybee swarms are formed in the spring when there's a lot of nutrients coming into the hive that causes an overpopulation growth. And this act as a signal for the queen to leave the hive with almost half of the bees. Most of the bees that leave the hive with the queen are usually young bees. They are young bees because they need to build the new hive. And these young bees are actually called builders. They have uh, wax glands that they can use them in order to build their new hive. Here you can see me opening the box that they choose to land in. As you can see, the box is empty and slowly the bees will fill this hive. Um, so I decided to grab some uh, foundation frames to put inside the hive, which will make it easier for the bees to build their new nest. If we don't use their, these foundation frames, it will just take longer time for the bees to build their new nest and the nest will be built in a chaotic way that will be impossible for us to manipulate later. So, as for the decision-making process of choosing their new nest, it's absolutely mind-blowing. When bees start to cluster on a branch, usually next to their old hive, some of these bees are called scout bees they leave the cluster and they start looking for a new nesting place. The nesting place is usually nearby the branch that they were on. And here, because we are in an apiary, we have some old boxes laying around. So they found one of these boxes and they decided to settle in one of them. So scout bees leave this cluster and start looking for a new nesting place. Whenever a scout bee finds a new nesting place that might be suitable for the swarm to go and settle in, this scout bee goes back to the cluster and perform the waggle dance. 
Now, if you're not familiar with the waggle dance, I'm going to add a link here for a video that I did on waggle dances. But in short, the waggle dance is the language of honeybees where they can communicate distance and direction in order to look for new sources of food or new nesting places like we see here. So the scout bee perform the waggle dance and recruits more scout bees in order to go and check the new nesting place that she found. Now, if the new nesting place is suitable for the swarm, more bees will go back to the cluster and perform the same dance, which will lead to more bees moving towards this new house or this new nest. In other words, my friends, this is how bees vote. This is the voting system of honeybees in order to choose their new nesting place. So let's take, for example, a honeybee that found this box here. This honeybee went back to the cluster, performed the waggle dance, recruited some other bees, and they all came to check on the new nesting place and evaluate it. So the moment there are 10 to 20 bees assembled outside this box and they all agree that this box is actually suitable for the swarm, they all go back to the cluster on the tree where we saw them at the beginning and they initiate a liftoff where the swarm flies as a group to their new home. So if this is not crazy and mind-blowing for you, I don't know what to say. I mean, the level of communication between these individual insects is absolutely crazy. And there's a lot to learn from these small insects. So at this point, there are more and more bees landing in. And if you look carefully, you will see the queen. This is the queen right here, walking right into the new box. And this is a very good sign. Allow me to take a moment here and tell you how much I enjoy making these videos. I'm a beekeeper and I'm a scientist and all I want is to share the fascinating world of bees with you. So if you found this content informative and entertaining, please be sure to hit the like and the subscribe to my channel. And if you're a beekeeper or interested in getting started, share your own tips and experiences in the comments below. So here we can see all these bees landing in and walking into the hive. You can see there are some bees forming a bridge and I'm trying to capture it here. They're just holding their hands and they're like a bridge for other bees to walk on them and move inside. On the other hand, if you look at some of the bees at the entrance of the hive, they're lifting their abdomen in the air and they're moving their wings. These bees are actually releasing a pheromone that tells the other bees where to land. And these huge bees, these are the males. And we can tell that they are males because of their big bodies and their eyes. The eyes of the males are connected, unlike the eyes of the females that are not connected. They're only on the sides. So the eyes of the males are connected just like a pilot, an airplane pilot or like a jet pilot helmet and some say they're connected from above because it helps them finding a queen while mating in the air so at this point there are more and more bees flying in more bees are releasing the pheromone and marking the place as their new nest. And this time lapse will show you how bees are moving into the hive. We'll see less and less bees outside. All the cloud that was in the air disappeared. They are all now, most of them are inside the hive. There are just still some bees flying around trying to land. So now I will open the hive 
and add the foundation frames that I talked about earlier. And what's interesting is that two days after, there was another swarm that chose to land in a box next to this box here. Now I'm just laying in the foundation frames carefully. I don't want to kill any bee. I don't want to squeeze them. I'm using the smoke. Uh, smoke helps us work with the bees because it drives them away from the source of the smoke and it's much safer for the bees basically. And this is me inside the cluster. And just to say, the bees are actually not dangerous while they're swarming. They are not dangerous because the bees actually don't sting while they're swarming because they need every single bee in the swarm in order to build the new house. What we see here is actually two days after where there was another swarm that came to settle in a box next to the one that we saw earlier so that's it for this video thanks a lot for watching i hope you really enjoyed it and see you in the next video